But the soap opera surrounding Something's Got to Give was far from over. On June 9th, Fox announced that it had replaced Monroe with Lee Remick, who came to the Fox lot for costume tests the next day. Remick defended the studio for dropping Monroe. I feel she should have been replaced, she told reporters. The movie business is crumbling down around our ears because of that kind of behavior. In its haste to act decisively, however, Fox overlooked an important detail. Dean Martin's contract gave him right of approval over his co-star, and Martin immediately rejected Lee Remick. Dean said, he said right here in the dressing room, right in the front of the dressing room up there when he, we found out she was gone. And somebody in the studio came over and said, well, we're going to go ahead and do it with Lee Remick. He said, no, we're not going to do it with Lee Remick. <laughs> and that was it. And that's the way I heard him say that about Marilyn and walked off. She felt really proud that he would stand by her and that that really pleased her. And I remember, I think she came and, and you know, showed me the headline. No Monroe, no Martin, or something like that that it was. And she was really tickled by that. 20th Century Fox soon came to regret firing Marilyn Monroe. With Dean Martin rejecting Lee Remick as a replacement, the studio had, in effect, unwittingly killed its own production and tossed $2 million down the drain. Hard as it must have been to swallow, there was only one way to salvage something's got to give. Just weeks after dropping her from the picture, suing her for breach of contract and denouncing her in the press, Fox quietly rehired Marilyn Monroe. The studio agreed to pay her more than twice her original salary to finish the film. We were with her Thursday before the Saturday that she passed away, and she was as happy as we've ever seen her. Anticipation of going to work, healthy, good shape physically at that point. I heard that we, that we were going to do the picture. Okay, and we're going to go back to the picture. I called the Wednesday before she died, and I talked to her. All the conversation was we were going to go back. We're going to go back and work. Seems to be a lot. Monroe, of course, never did return to work. On August 4th, just a month before filming of Something's Got to Give was to resume, she made headlines for the last time. Monroe's death made it obvious that her struggles during Something's Got to Give were all too real, and her firing, in retrospect, seems harsh and unfair. Without a doubt, she was a problematic star, struggling with sickness and at times crippling fears, an actress whose appeal came from the same mix of beauty and pain that made it so hard for her to work and ultimately to live. But Monroe was also a scapegoat for Hollywood's dying studio system, a system accustomed to assembly line creativity and absolute control over its talent. Monroe was not an assembly line star, and her struggles were something the studio bosses could neither tolerate nor understand. Monroe herself wrote what may well be the best epitaph to both her life and her work on Something's Got to Give, an odd, poignant telegram sent to Robert Kennedy just days after she was fired, turning down an invitation to visit the Kennedy clan. Unfortunately, I'm involved in a freedom ride protesting the loss of minority rights for the few remaining earthbound stars. All we demanded, Marilyn wrote, was our right to twinkle.